On AM Talk today, uh, we have a lot more to talk about. And especially when we have to wrap up the discussions for the end of the week, it means that we have to set the tone also for discussions on various public platforms from the weekend and also in the new week. We have in the studio Joseph Osewusu. He's a member of parliament for the Kwai. Joe Weiss, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Very also much. a former chief executive for the DVLA. And he was very instrumental for a lot of um, the reforms that we have in the DVLA yeah. currently. And I have to say that uh, I really like the way uh, he comported himself as a chief executive when he was there. It was always good to go interview him too. Thanks the, for the compliment. Yes, the solitude <laughs> was good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I say, that one, he didn't say it loud. No, it was undertone. <laughs> Inu Safusaini is also another one. Um, I, I haven't enjoyed this only before, though. But <laughs> it was after my time. But uh, he's the member of parliament for Tamale Central and um, is currently the minister for roads. And uh, talking about roads, we know that at least we've blocked a number of roads for uh, one of the biggest televangelists we have coming out of our continent, um, Pastor Chris of Christ Embassy. And I believe that you're very instrumental in the blockage. No, no, I know absolutely oh, nothing know. about the blockage. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's awesome the way we're blocking critical roads. And I don't know what you make of this. Let, let, let me just run by you some of the roads. Perhaps you don't know them. Yep. Mm -hmm. 28th February Road at Sepset Quarters Traffic Lights. Starless mm -hmm. 91 Road at mm -hmm. the Ministry's Traffic Lights. Mm -hmm. Castle Road, mm -hmm. AU Circle, mm -hmm. Osu Cemetery. Mm. Uh, the Blaster Square leading to uh, the Laboni Junction towards Usu. You've even blocked Usu traffic lights towards the crossroads, Utu Kofi Street behind the crossroads and local road. And you're even telling those who will be patronizing the crusade mm. to even park at areas further away. If child, school children walked several kilometers to school, you'll be complaining. Well, you can see clearly that this uh, instruction comes from the uh, Accra, no, Accra Regional Police Command. Oh, okay. And uh, I think that they are doing it for safety and security reasons. Okay. Uh, they have not yet served as notice. I mean, I've, I've also seen it for the first time. Uh, they need to, to talk to us so that we can properly help them mm -hmm. manage traffic within the areas that they will be closing. Anyway, the police are always in charge of security. Security. So yeah. I guess they are the best people to manage all mm -hmm. this. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, what do you make of uh, Just uh, by the way, not really um, an issue. Well, uh, I, in, in, in Ghana, religious activities are uh, so, high on the agenda. So sometimes you can't help it. I just try to avoid. If I were the manager of the city, though, I would have asked them to relocate if it's going to um, affect. And Free flow of traffic and business. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, now let's talk about the substantives. And mm. we know that uh, the people of Agogo have been having difficulties flashing away the Fulani headsmen. And uh, uh, we know that the Ghana police also announced a roadmap uh, to make sure that they deal with the issue head on. And so the IGP took a trip to Agogo. We're, we're going to bring you just a summarized uh, story of what we saw there. And then we'll have some uh, few minutes of discussions on the subject. Busy streets of Agogo Township bustles with activity as men and women engage in their daily work to keep their families afloat. On the outskirts of the town, however, the picture is very different. Many of the natives and sojourners are into farming, but their farms are under attack and destruction. Suddenly came reports of alleged shooting, prompting the deployment of security personnel to avert further loss of lives and destruction to property. Minutes of trudging through the bush yielded no results in the search for the presence of Fulani herdsmen suspected to have fired the shots. Agogo residents are unhappy about the development, and the people are, however, divided over the sincerity of the IGP's word. All eyes are now on the IGP to deliver on his promise to bring a lasting end to the long-standing saga between nomadic Fulani herdsmen and the people of Agogo. <laughs> I, well, we all don't know what to make of it. The sound of gunshots alone should tell us that 
is an issue that we need to deal with uh, as far as security is concerned. Joe White, I have to start with you. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Morning. Uh, <laughs> this issue has been a long-standing one. It, it, to the best of my knowledge, uh, I was dealing with residents accused of counter-attacking when I was a private practitioner. Some of them, the MPs have contacted me and I was defending them because they had, um, a resident had been killed and they had mobilized to counter-attack and try to um, respond on their own. But you see, for me, it's a major security issue that should be put at a much higher pedestal in, in the discussion of the national security issues. Because the, the press conference that was organized and which was addressed by the MP, the impression one gets is that this is a community that are giving up that the country will protect them. And therefore, they will take arms. Now, if they, they, they succeed in doing that, and even succeed in expelling the invaders, I call them invaders because otherwise these are quite rural folk living in their, in their own peace. You know, and then they are attacked by cattle uh, tenders. Right. If they succeed in expelling them, they will be emboldened in holding themselves out as responsible for their own security and endanger the security of the country. And that's why I think that this wishy-washy approach to dealing with the matter should cease. We should have um, 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 a well-thought-out plan because it, it likes when it catches national attention, there are public discussions, it goes down. As soon as the eyes and ears of the media are taking off, it resurfaces. Often, the pitch is heightened when people die. But those who are raped and property that are destroyed do not often catch media attention. It is when murders occur that the media... Uh, are, those, are those cases isolated or and sporadic or, or really they are they, they are uh, dense as they could be in terms of numbers that we should be concerned about they are i mean because I mean, because we have uh, people who who undertake rape uh, and and do all kinds of things and and now i hold before the court every day who are ordinary Ghanaians and necessarily not full any heads man but the situation over there is different i'm sure you'd have heard a report about the pregnant woman and in the presence of her husband, said, we want to sleep with your wife. The husband said, no, you can see she's pregnant. You shoot the man dead, rape the woman, and leave her. She bleeds to death, even at the hospital, she could not be saved. This is totally different from any other kind of rape situation. And it makes it difficult for women to go to farm on, on their own. This young man who was killed this week, he was home when he heard her, her, his mother was going to the farm. So he followed up, fearing that his mother might be uh, um, accosted. accosted. By. And unfortunately, he got shot and killed. Now, we cannot treat these as, even if it was one, it should be sufficient to alarm our senses of urgency. And I think that so far, I am not impressed with their approach. You recall that, uh, I think it was 2011, 2012, there about. They took the matter to court, adding the land laws that have given out land to them. That's how they got judgment, that they should be evicted. First, they are there because some landlords have given out large tracts of land. And they, I've read a copy of the agreement they had with them. Fence the area, create your own wealth within your area so the cattle do not cross over or uh, trespass onto other people's farm. The cattle owners have not done that. Rather, they have continued to use nomadic headsmen who move. And because of this, the court ordered that you should evict them. In fact, the landowners, the chiefs, actually wrote that you have breached the agreement. You have not fenced your, uh, the lands released to you. You have not created the dark, so you have breached the agreement, and therefore, um, we are resiling from the agreement. And based on that, the court ordered that they should be evicted. That order went to the Regional Coordinating Council. So the Regional Coordinating Council has all the power 
to be able to uh, um, evict the, the, uh, um, the cattle owners <clears throat> who have acquired the, the land there. But it appears to me that we are not taking it seriously enough. Um, I had a chat with the regional police commander, and his argument was that it's not easy because the people move. But they move and come back to their hearts and houses within the area. Okay. If those guys are removed from mm. there, they will not have any basis for coming Group back of there. people, nomads. Uh, some of them, of course, are sedentary. The Fulani, we have, we have two types of them. Yeah. But the whole of the belt, the Sahelian belt in West Africa, you just can't take them off. And now we're supposed to be living in, uh, in, in globalized villages around the world. So where do we take this matter? Well, uh, we're supposed to be living in a globalized village. I mean, uh, the world is becoming more globalized and, mm. and more exacerbated more by climate change situations. What is happening is a direct result, a manifestation of climate change issues. I mean, the, and what we are experiencing is a fight over resources. And people have predicted that the next world war might be over climate change issues. Now, for, for, because the rains have st stopped falling in the Sahelian region, in the up, the, the uh, I mean, where we used to call Upper Volta, where these floods were uh, prevalent. Or, the, originally. Originally. They the, the started drifting to the areas where they can continue to tend their cattle and, and drifted past the northern region, uh, past the upper region. Upper region is almost now a desert. Drifted past the northern region, gone into the brown half region. They are now in the Ashanti region. And wherever they go, you find in, the, in their wake security issues because they are normals. They live in the bush. And so it calls into, into question what our security agencies have been doing to contain them. And, and again, where do you evict them to? Do you mark them across the border? To where and they tell them to find their way back to where they came from originally? Niger, where do you, Mauritania. So where do you send them to? Well, they're, that they're, is why, they're citizens of the countries. That is why we, they are nomads. <laughs> that's, that's why we need to take proactive steps when issues of this nature begin developing. Now, some of the local indigenous have acquired their animals. They bought some of their animals. And some are now their employees looking after their animals. And they are complicit in protecting them. They are normals in the first place. How do you fence them? The agreement was not implementable in the first place. They are not used to keeping animals in ranches. They graze over wide areas of fields, traversing areas of lands that are owned by different landlords, put under different cultivation, I mean, cultivation of diff or different uses. So it's a major security threat. Nothing will stand in their way. They live in the bush. And because we don't stay, I mean, we, we, uh, most of our activities are in towns, they accost individuals, individual persons in the bush. And an individual cannot stand against them in the bush. It's just similar to what used to happen in the Calamse. When you allow foreigners, non-natives, to take over your resources, they will protect the resources with illegal means. And that's what happened. Uh, the, the, the IGP went there, well, while that was symbolic enough, is that uh, well, a start of having perhaps a plan, which we know as far as the communication is, is virtually absent, because we've not been told about how systematically we're going to deal with the Fulani headsmen and perhaps also make sure we have a truce between them and the, settler co uh, and the community that they get to settle. Well, I think that basically this is a regional problem. It must be tackled from the regional point of view, from the ECOWAS point of view. Countries must learn to take responsibility for the behavior and actions of their citizens. These people are from it. I mean, if Ghana, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso do not collaborate in solving these issues, we are not going to be able to deal with it. So I, I think that we should look at it as a, a regional problem and deal with it as such. Get the citizens of, I mean, we are not saying that if we have resources, if we are fodder, and then the flood herdsmen want to graze their cattle 
And we have more than enough. Sometimes we even bend them. And, and they, they want to move down. There must be some systems in place to regulate their conducts. And their respective countries must know that this country is a country of laws. That you cannot come as a citizen of another country to behave with impunity. What is happening in the Abogo area is pure impunity. Now, I do not yet see how the, the IGP, acting by himself alone, can solve this problem. Even, law, even with the police establishment that he has? How can you use law and order? Law and order will temporarily doze the issue, will make the issue subside. It won't go away. Uh, well, 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 the traditional leaders, because the people they come to meet or the community they come to meet are not the police, the police community, so to speak. They come to meet the traditional community. And so when you get to a town, the chief would have to notice that they are in. And so somehow the chief should, should have been aware that they are in. No, you see, first they were brought there because some cattle owners, they are Ghanaians, they acquired tracts of land to build ranches. Okay. That's how they came there. Okay. Large tracts of land, acres, to build ranches. That's where the agreement comes in. So you're supposed to fence the area giving you for that purpose. Create your own wells for the animals to drink from, you know. And then they employed the headsmen. But now, because these people are not used to staying within their confined areas, they are traversing the boundaries, mm -hmm. going into people's farms, destroying property, maiming people, and uh, um, raping and killing, you know. That's why the court order said, okay, you brought them here in the first place by um, leasing to them tracts of land. So move. That the order, for me, is not, should not be targeted at the, uh, the headsmen. Mm, okay. at, at the owners of, of the, the land. Cattle. Okay, the cattle. Okay, move your cattle. Yeah. Move your cattle elsewhere. Go okay. and get your ranch elsewhere. Yeah. Where? Well, wherever. <laughs> there are ranches elsewhere. There are full army men elsewhere. There are some roaming around my constituency. You know, but it is because they are not in such uh, a, a group, numbers, and relations such that uh, they carry guns. You see them, they're only carrying a stick and following a small herd of cattle often. But they are never known to have committed any such crimes as, as they are doing in Agugu area. You know, and... Indeed, if you want to rear a large uh, herd of cattle, then you need to create a ranch, protect the bounds so they don't destroy other people's property. And for me, the, the issue of where, it should be a question answered by those who want to be in that business. When you decided to have a, 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 a radio program, you found the where. That's a business. You invested in property whether you bought it or rented it, that's it. So those who want to be in that business must make sure that they invest in, in, in that business, protect the area they acquire so that the cattle will stay. And the people they, they hire, they should take responsibility for them. That mm. you have hired these headsmen, brought them into their premises. They must know that these are offenses. Now to the point where now we have uh, a member of parliament for example uh, now having to come to some level of animosity or perhaps confrontation with the regional police heads. <laughs> that's uh, almost as if it's uh, No, we we'll, won't we'll call it the, uh, the threshold. Uh, well, it is one because the people are angry they are calling to arms. They say, it's a call to arms. Look, let's rise and protect ourselves. That's right. their constitutional right. Then the constitutional right to be protected, but it's not to, to protect to yourself. Yes, but 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 not the right to call for arms. That's that's. Ah, not. How do you protect yourself, pro property, uh, yourself and your property? The law permits you to kill even an invader in protection of your life and your property. You're entitled to do that. So the only thing is that if you have you acquire firearms, then you must register it. Yeah. You're right. So, and, but the point is. It is out of desperation. That's what I where I started from. Because there's been a certain level of still stillment. 
and in which or still the, the in which communities believe the security that agencies have not taken action in the they believe place. that the security agencies have been compromised so you, your, mean, your you mean you mean the full and the full and Headsmen have been giving them uh, cattle as bribes. Not the headsmen. No, 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 the no. owners of... They've been given... Of, yeah. They've been compromised. Yes. Mm. In fact, there's a, a, a judge who was then at the Attorney General's Department. She's now a judge. She was part of the team that was originally put together to help a victim by the Regional Coordinating Council. And she said, that, look, these people, even while they were there trying to enforce the law, the people were making them offers. They believe that every public official is buttable. And that's why they are not afraid. I see. You know, so the that's, people... That's quite um, revealing. Your report said it, that the people are divided yes. as to whether the IGP's visit will uh, result in any good thing. The reason, why have they become cynical? Because there have been other interventions. And they that believe... That have not worked in the past. Right. Or they in believe the that the public officials are complicit. Okay. The, the